the highlighted content web part can save you so much time and here's why. If you are continually adding new files and videos to your SharePoint pages, but you don't wanna to have to edit those pages every single time you add something new, you can set up highlighted content to feed the information based on filters and keywords. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to set up the web part properly and then make sure that the files are properly named. In this scenario, we're creating a website for our fake company and we want to curate a list of training videos. To find this web part, go to the toolbox icon on the right side of the screen. At the top, you see some frequently used web parts. Notice that highlighted content is in this section, but if you don't see it on your page, click see all web parts and scroll down to the documents, list and library section. If you click on the web part, it will be added to whatever section you have selected on your page, or you can drag and drop it into the specific place where you want it. Right now, there are no files showing because this is a new site and I haven't added any yet, but on your site, you may just see a bunch of random documents. To narrow it down, we need to adjust the properties first. When you select a web part, a toolbar will show up just above it. Click the properties icon that looks like two little slide bars. A pane will appear on the right side of the screen. From here, we're going to create a filter. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly add a title to the web part. Now this is optional and you can toggle the title off. In the content section, we're going to make a few choices to refine the filter. First, we need to determine the source, which is where SharePoint will look for matching files. By default, it is this site. This means that any file from the entire SharePoint collection that matches our keyword is going to show up in highlighted content. Now, I don't use this most of the time because I'm not the only one who submits information to SharePoint, and I may not want other people's information to show up in my training site. When you click the dropdown, you will see additional options. The one that I use most often is document library on this site. When that is selected, the default is documents, unless you have created more libraries already, and then it will be the first one alphabetically. In this example, I created one called videos. Next, we will choose a document type. Although this example is about training videos, notice that you can choose things such as Word, Excel, PDF, etc. I'm going to choose video again. The reason I do this is that I've noticed that sometimes people will put files in the wrong place and then that file will randomly show up on my page. By limiting it just to videos, it takes away the chance that some random Word file will show up. Now that I've done that, notice that we have three videos. Since this is a test site, that is all I have right now. But if you have more videos across various topics, it will pull in all of them. In this case, I only want to show Teams training videos. So this is where the filter and sort comes in. The default filter is title includes the words, and this is okay, but it can be a bit restrictive because now your keyword has to be in the title. The option I use is column name. When you choose that, some additional options will show up. In the column name dropdown, you will see all of the columns associated with your document library. This gives you much more flexibility for your filtering. So for example, one of the people I coach uses a column that she created with some categories formatted as a choice column. Every time someone selects a specific choice, the file will go to highlighted content. In this example, however, I'm going to use the standard column and choose name file. The reason I like this is that I can use my keyword in the name of the file, but then I can use a different title that will show up on the SharePoint page. Next, I need to choose how the filter is going to look for information. The default is equals, but I prefer contains. This way, if someone puts a keyword anywhere in the file name, the content will still show up. Now in my document management guidelines, I specify that the keyword should be at the end of the file name, but let's face it, people don't always follow the guidelines. 
Now I will pick my keyword. For this example, I will use teams since that is what the training videos are about. Notice that we only have one video instead of three because the keyword is only associated with one video. Now here's a tip. If the keyword is common and other people might use it for something not related to what you're trying to highlight, you can use a made up code that no one else would think to use. Then you can add that code anywhere into the file name. Now again, I prefer to put mine at the end of the file name. If you're finding this video useful, please like or subscribe. Now let's look at the rest of the properties before we go update the file names for our videos. If you scroll down to the layout section, you can choose how the files will show up on your page. The choices are grid, list, carousel, compact, or film strip. I've noticed that the grid and film strip are almost identical. The one you choose will depend on how much space you want it to take up on your page. For example, compact is nice when you want to take up less space, but there's still a small thumbnail. Now let's look at how many items will show up in the web part. The default is eight. If you have more than that, the viewer won't be able to see them unless they select see all. However, you can increase this number and I'm gonna go crazy here and say I might have up to 50 training videos. Now I'm going to republish the site and then go to the video document library so that we can look at how to update the details for the file to fit the filter. The first file is called basic navigation and it is about teams, but the word teams is not in the file name. I wanna do two things here to optimize this file. I want to rename it and I want to add a title. Click on the three dots next to the file name and scroll to the bottom of the menu to select details so that we can make both changes in one place. In the pane on the right side of the screen, I'm going to update the file name and add the keyword. Next, I'm going to populate the title field. The reason for this is that by default, the name of the file and the title are the same unless you specify a different title. I like to do this so that I can have a viewer friendly title and then have the keyword in the specific file name. Plus, when you do this, the extension of the file will no longer show up on your SharePoint page and I just think it looks cleaner. I've quickly updated the other files as well. Now let's go back to the SharePoint web page to see the update. Notice that we have three videos back and it shows the friendlier title. The cool thing is that when you use highlighted content, if you have the same files on multiple pages, then all pages are updated. For example, I used to have some files on a case study page and in a training library. Using my made up code, whenever I uploaded a new file that contained that code, both pages were taken care of. It may have only taken five minutes to make those updates each time a new case study was published, but if you're uploading a lot of documents, the time savings can really add up. Ready to take your SharePoint site to the next level? Try adding the highlighted content web part and see the difference for yourself. And don't forget to share your experience in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.